This week I've been really blessed as I've um, delved into the Word of God and, and, and just spent hours just reading and um, thinking of the things of God. And I can only encourage you if, you, if you don't spend time in the Word of God or your, your time's only fleeting, then I encourage you to spend more time in the Word of God. It's, it's surprising what it does to one's soul. It also gives you a glimpse on what things are all about in the Word of God. And um, I've been in the uh, Old Testament this week, and I've, I've started again to read uh, the Bible again. And uh, I've been blessed by the genealogies that, were come, that are there right at the beginning of Genesis. And you, you know, you get lots and lots of begats and these begats, and then all of a sudden you'll get a little snippet right in the middle of all those begats, a little taster about somebody, and it pricks your conscience and you want to know more. So I've been blessed. So just to encourage you this week, do you know, I, as you know, I celebrated my 50th birthday this year, and um, Nathaniel this week said to me, how old will I be? No, Daddy, when I leave school, will you train me to be a builder? He is eight this week, and he's wanting me to train him to be a builder. And I'm thinking, wow, do I really want that responsibility? But you see, it's, it's the duty of those that are older to educate those who are younger. But you know something? Over the last 50 years, things have changed so much that I don't know what happened in the 60s, but there was just this mass explosion. You know, I, I, I seem to feel that I'm, I'm, I'm so out of touch. I walk down the street and I see people like this. And if my mother had seen them, she would have said, you need to use tincture of myrrh or hot olive oil for that. But all they're doing is listening to a conversation on their phone. Times past, people were seen doing this, and you would have thought they were Catholic, praying the rosary. But today, they're texting on the phone. I went down the street only this week and I saw a, a, a lad with his trousers down here. My father would have said, here's a belt. Here's one for you. I forget where I was and there was this person a little way across there and she was talking to herself and she was having a, a conversation with herself. Now we would have said, 50 years ago, take her to the mental house. But today, there's something in her ear. We would have said 50 years ago was a deaf aid, and she's holding a conversation with the phone. And things change. And things that we thought 50 years ago, today are so different. I remember listening to somebody on the television, and they were saying that during the the um, 60s, there was a computer, and it was huge, and it was in a room, and it took so many cabinets in this room, and it was huge. And I think the room was a hundred yards long, and it was full of these computers. But the same size computer is here in my hand, 50 years on. Why do I say this? Things that we know change. But the things that are written in the Word of God, no matter how long we wait, they'll always be the same. Hanisha, I think it was Friday night, um, really wanted to... She asked me a question. Now, I've got to try and remember how she worded it. She said, oh, yes. Moses 
was the founder of what religion? And Jesus was the founder of what religion? And that was a question that she has to answer. Now, I'm going to ask you the same thing. I'm going to ask you the same thing. Who do you think Moses, or what religion do you think Moses was the founder of? Anybody? Nobody. Well, I think that's what she wanted. I think that's what she wanted. And Jesus was the founder of which religion? Christian. I think that's what she wanted. But you know, that's not right, is it? It's not quite right. If you look back, you know, the covenant was first made with Abraham. So you could probably say that he was. And Jesus only came to fulfill that what was in the Old Testament. And then she went on to ask me another question. And it, it was all about faith. And I know that we find faith very difficult. But I tried to describe it to her like this. Faith is like when somebody makes a will. It's all written down there in law. And you can virtually bank your houses on it, but you can't appropriate that will until the person who's made the will dies. And even today, when you go to uh, the, the solicitors, you make a will and testament or a covenant. And I wonder this morning whether or not you've entered into a covenant with God? Have you entered into a covenant with Him? I was reading this week, as I said, um, part of the covenant that God made with Abraham and how for a covenant to be made in the Old Testament period of time, they would bring animals and sacrifice animals and they would lay them down on the floor and to make something binding, you would then walk together through the middle of this display of dead meat. And now there in Genesis you see that God made a covenant with Abraham and did that. But I wanted to read a few verses this morning from Hebrews chapter 9 and it says this and we're in verse 11 but Christ being come on high uh, sorry but Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on the unclean, sanctified to the puring of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You see, we have a Bible, and it's split into two the Old Testament and the New Testament or the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The Old Covenant required blood, the New T Covenant required blood. The Old Covenant took place in the tabernacle or the temple. The New, tabernacle, the new Covenant also takes place in the tabernacle or temple. Not this tabernacle, 
Not this temple, but this one. This one here. Here. Inside you. You see, the old covenant was all about covering. The new covenant is all about cleansing. The old covenant was about sacrifices. The new covenant is about one sacrifice. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Many people don't understand the Old Testament because they don't read the New Testament. And many people can't get to grips with the New Testament because they haven't read the Old Testament. You can't separate the two. Here the writer to the Hebrews was saying, look, there was a covenant made, but there is a new covenant made by the precious blood of Jesus. And it's that covenant that you need to hang on to. Not long after this book was written, the temple that the Jews knew to be their holy place was ripped apart. And you know why that was, don't you? Remember when they built the temple? God asked them to get gold and silver. And they were very wonder, wonderful. Do you know, as a bricklayer, I'm fascinated by masonry, right? You can see this column over here, can't you? You can see this column here? You see how small the mortar joint is? Can you see? As compared to this one, each one of these stones were fashioned, handcrafted, and on the inside there would be a mark of the, the marksman, the mason that made the stone. But in the tabernacle, or in the temple, there wasn't mortar. They put gold in between the bricks. So, Durrell, if you wanted to get that mortar out, what are you going to do? You're going to knock the bricks down. And that's what they did to the temple. They knocked down all the brickwork just to get to the gold. But you know, God prophesied it. It's going to happen. But he wanted a new temple. He wanted a new tabernacle. That which is in your heart. John, the divine, he writes doesn't he? How does he put it? And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. That word dwelt was tabernacled. Tabernacled. He came into close relationship with you. And when Jesus died on Calvary, He opens the way for not this kind of a tabernacle to take place, but this type of tabernacle. That Jesus might enter into us by His Holy Spirit and transform us and change us and make us more like Him. Coming to church will not make you any better than you are today. Really won't. Listening to me preach will not make you any better than you are today. I asked the people, I asked the people in our, our luncheon on Friday, I asked them this question, I'll ask you the same. Is your faith dependent upon those Sunday school teachers that taught you or is your faith dependent upon the Word of God that is ministered to you every day of your life as you spend time with Him? Why do I ask that? Why do I ask that? I cannot make you a Christian. The Bible says, I, would, I wish I could, but I can't. I can't take you to the gate. 
Kevin says and talks about the narrow gate, doesn't he? The little gate, the narrow road. I can't push you down there. You have to go of your own volition. But when you do, first of all, you might have been told. Some preacher might have stood up and told you about the way of salvation, how Jesus died on a cross. And he died that you might have forgiveness of sins because his precious blood was shed for you. But you know that stays on the cross and it doesn't do anything unless you apply it to your own life. Unless you say, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. And I need your precious blood to be applied to my life to cleanse me of my sin and make me a child of God. Come and tabernacle with me. Come and dwell with me. And then the relationship starts. The relationship of the Holy Spirit coming into your life and totally transforming you. And he's And did we not hear only a few weeks ago about the Holy Spirit, how He leads us and guides us into all truth? He is the one that fashions our life. He is the one that shapes our life. He is the one that wants to bring us closer to God. It no longer becomes me. It no longer becomes John or John or Adam. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes, whenever somebody gets up and preaches the Word of God, there will be things in it that will trigger in your heart and say, yes, oh, yes. Mm. When I get home, I'm going to look at that and, and let the Spirit of God speak to you again. But it's the Spirit of God that makes a difference. He wants to tabernacle with you. He wants to join with you. I said earlier on that a will or a testament doesn't come into effect until the, what is it, the attestee, attestate dies, the person who wrote the bill. Jesus said that in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there ye may be also. That is one benefit. One benefit of having that relationship. But it didn't take effect until Jesus died. Kevin last week said, did he not, in the entire ministry of Jesus, he never saved one person, save the man on the cross. Do you know why? He couldn't. Although he was the Son of God, he couldn't save until the blood was shed. He couldn't save anybody. And you're going to say, hang on a minute. He saved the one on the cross. Yes, but remember. Remember the story of Jesus on the cross. Remember? He said to the thief, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You can split hairs. You can say that's not really heaven. I don't really care. But what Jesus was saying was that today you will be able to partake of the blessing that is given through my testament. And how do I know that to be the fact? Remember, when the soldiers came to break the knees of the people that were on the cross so that they would die quicker, they came to Jesus and found that he'd already died. So they plunged the spear up just to make sure. He already had died. So he died before that thief. So he was the first one to partake of 
the testament of Jesus Christ. Many years ago, we used to do a skit, a skit, and um, it was on heaven, and two angels talking, oh, he's died, you know, he's died. I wonder who's going to be the first person. Will it be? Now, who could it be? Would it be Moses? Would it be um, Abraham? Would it be all, all these wonderful? Who will be the first person to enter into heaven because of salvation by Jesus? And they were talking about all these wonderful people. And they're looking down the road and they can't see. And then all of a sudden, oh yes, they, they see somebody and he's getting closer and closer. Well, he doesn't look much like Moses and he, he certainly doesn't look much like Abraham and he doesn't look much like Enoch because Enoch's already there. But uh, who is he? And the man gets to the angels and he said, will you let me in? Well, uh, who are you? Well, um, I'm the thief. That, I'm the thief that was on the cross with Jesus. He was the first to participate of the testament of Jesus Christ. Another 2004, 12 years have gone since. That testament is still there. And it's still active. And it's still available for people to partake of it. And all you've got to do is say yes to Jesus. But it's not as easy as that. Remember the cost. Remember the cost. It cost Jesus everything. It wasn't cheap, even though it's free. A covenant was made on Calvary that day. And it's still open today. And it's still open for those who haven't said yes to Jesus. You may have been in church most of your life. You may have come, you may have sat, you may have served. But you've never really said, Jesus, I realize I'm a sinner. I realize that I've transgressed your law. All right, the world says it's all right to do this, but I realize that you say not. Savior, I want you to come into my life and change me. I want you to transform my life. I want you to come and tabernacle with me. I want you to make this body your abiding place. And I want you to take whatever is necessary out of my life and fill me with yourself. You may never have made that kind of prayer you may never have made that statement in your life. But today, the covenant that was started way back with Abraham and was completed with Jesus is available for you to die. Whenever people came to Jesus, they were made different and I remember the story, you know. One day, there was ten lepers came, and they all asked for healing. And do you know something? Jesus did it. He healed every single one. And I can just imagine the going down the road, because Jesus said, go and show yourselves to the high priests and do what was necessary. But as they were going, one of the lepers realized that he'd been healed. 
So he did no more than turn round and he came back to thank Jesus. And Jesus said, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? They're not here. And Jesus said, go home. Go home to your family. When you come into that place, when Jesus can say, you are his, and you are entitled to the full benefits of his will, then you're in a wonderful place. All these things that Kevin was talking about last week, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the ministries of the Holy Spirit, they come after, after you come into the relationship with him. They don't have a part of anybody who doesn't take part of the testament. They're only there for those who have taken part of the will. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is of force when the men are dead. Jesus died and he rose again. And he's offering you this morning eternal life. The question is, do you want it? Or are you happy to go without? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that your desire is to tabernacle amongst us. You want to dwell in us. And Father, I just pray right now, if there are those that have never asked you to be their Savior, never taken the benefits of your will, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would speak to them this morning, that you would move upon their heart, and Lord, that they would come and ask you to come and live in their heart and life. Lord, I just pray, if there are those here this morning that have accepted you as Lord and Savior, but yet really aren't living with all the benefits, the fringe benefits of your will, I pray, Heavenly Father, that this morning you might bring them on into the fullness that comes through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I just pray, if there's a church in Acott's Green, we wouldn't be impoverished, but would be full of blessing because you are living within us. Lord, I just pray, make us people of difference, Make us people of change. That, Lord, our lives might live to glorify your name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.